In this presentation, I'm going to go over the axioms associated with the von Neumann Morgenstern utility function. So, von Neumann Morgenstern utilities are very important in game theory, and we use them to capture intensity of preferences or cardinality, right? Uh, that is to say, we want to know more about the value that people place, that players place on different outcomes than simply they prefer A over B. We want to know how much more they prefer A over B. Specifically, we want to know, hey, if you had a choice between the certainty of one thing, like the status quo in life, or a lottery between maybe getting something better, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, making an improvement in the world, uh, how would you choose, right? And so if there's a, you know, if it's a coin toss as to whether you're gonna get the uh, this better thing, is it worth it, right? Um, and, and we can complicate that by putting a lesser, a worse than the status quo option. And so these are the kinds of questions we want to get at, and you need to get at them from looking at one side of a decision in a game theory basically expected utility theory, right, is dependent on all of this. So these are very important. Now the von neumann morgenstern utility theorem that underlies all this said that decision makers choosing between risky options will behave as if they are maximizing an underlying function. And here's the point, if four axioms are met, right? And so basically we're saying the, the theorem says, look, we can have we can model people making a decision over risky options as if they are maximizing an underlying utility function. We aren't saying that's what they're actually doing, but we can model it that way. We can come up with this utility function. This is basically we can use this utility function here to model their behavior, but there are four conditions that have to be met. Okay, so the von neumann morgenstern axioms, right? Players' choices must satisfy these conditions in order for us to model them as if there is an underlying function. So this is a scope requirement, right? We are saying not necessarily that this is how people act, right? Because remember, the model is an as-if model. And these conditions that are necessary for that to be valid, a way, a, a way of doing it, right, that will, will uh, give us reasonable predictions and, and model the be behavior properly, right, well, these have to be met. Now, you could take them as ontological statements. This is how people, rational people, behave, right? And in fact, this is essentially about, <laughs> these conditions are very similar to the requirements of rationality that are frequently discussed in game theory more generally, right? But uh, we we have to have, we got to you know kind of keep some uh, awareness of the vagarities here, right? It could be that you're making an ontological statement, but technically you aren't. You're just saying, hey, look, these have to be met, and you have to give me a reason to think they aren't being met before I say, okay, we can't do this. So, what are these requirements? The first one, uh, and actually the first two are very straightforward, similar to what are, are, are the standard requirements of rationality. Actually, first of all, there's completeness. For all outcomes A and B, players have to have preferences right, over them, i.e., and the way we talk about utilities at this point, when we start using these uh, von neumann morgenstern utility functions, we start talking about utility, and so we say the utility to I, very important, it's always the utility to that player. It's not an objective statement. This is subjective. It applies only to player I. The utility to I of A is either greater than the utility of I to for, for alternative B, outcome B, or it's equal or it's less than, right? And so we have to have completeness. Now, in practice, what does this mean? Well, it's, a, it's an idea that, hey, you know your preferences over all outcomes. So you have complete information. That would be one way to think of it. Another way to think of it is, hey, you have already done all the research in that you need. You're ready to buy the car. You know what car you want. You know the price you want to pay. You have already determined everything you need to know. So you know the utility of one car versus another, right? If, if cars are the outcomes. Um, this is the idea of completeness. 
And some people say, oh, no one knows all, you know, they can't know all this. Well, maybe they can't. Uh, but maybe there's part of the process is they are learning about the outcomes in which they prefer. And that probably goes on in life. But we are, as a matter of methodological bracketing, not there. We're, we're modeling after they've decided their preferences, right? Or, or they just know their preferences. It depend, you know, so there's, we could go and problematize that, but we're not going to. The next one's very straightforward, transitivity, right? Um, if the utility of A to I of A is greater than the utility of, to I of B, you know, uh, basically if A is better than B and B is better than C, then A should be better than C, right? That's standard transitivity, very much the, you know, exactly the same thing as when we talk about rationality in general. Now we have an interesting one, continuity, right? And this is a little weird when you explain it mathematically. Right? It basically says for all outcomes A, B, and C, and assume they're preferred in that order. That's a preference ordering. A is better than B is better than C. There must be a probability P, and probabilities are always between 0 and 1, such that for the player I, the utility of getting B with certainty is equal to a lottery between A and C, right? So if, you know, we've got chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry, right, then we've got, if, you know, if we want to look at a lottery here, right, so if you prefer chocolate to vanilla to strawberry, there has to be some lottery involving a random chance of getting chocolate or strawberry, right, that's the lottery, that is equal in value to the certainty of getting strawberry, huh? All right, think of it this way. It can't be the case that you hate strawberry so much, right? You would prefer to have chocolate uh, over vanilla, but if someone says, hey, I'm gonna give you a choice of either vanilla with certainty or you're either going to get chocolate or strawberry, right? And maybe it's a 99% chance you're gonna get chocolate, but there's a 1% chance of getting strawberry, right? And you're like, oh, hells no. Right, you hate strawberry so much, and 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 then cut that percent down to one tenth of a percent, a thousandth of a percent, a one millionth of a percent. Right. The point is that you can't either hate something so much, or on the other end of the scale, love something so much, right, that I make you indifferent. Suppose you just really love chocolate. And so any chance of getting chocolate, even if it means, okay, I gotta have strawberry, you know, any slight chance of getting chocolate would be preferable to having fricking vanilla, right? Because that's what you're being offered the choice of with certainty, right? You're saying, hey, you have the certainty of vanilla or this lottery over chocolate and strawberry, right? So basically there has to be, this is this idea of continuity. There can't be this discrete, this jump in value, either plus or minus that, negates, you know, makes it impossible to come up with a lottery where you'd be indifferent. I like to think of it as excluding categorically different options, like, hey, heaven and hell, right? If you had a chance of going to hell because you picked, you know, said, all right, we're going to give you, you know, uh, a, you know, big chance you get chocolate, right? 99% chance of getting chocolate, but a 1% chance of going to hell, you know, I, I think I'll have vanilla today, right? Same thing with, with heaven. And by the way, if this sounds really weird, I have done this. I have violated continuity. When I played video poker back in the day, uh, my first wife was in Vegas, so going to visit the in-law meant we would get out to do a little video poker. I actually calculated all my best responses, and, you know, if I get this hand, I should do this. And, you know, I did all that research, but I had a rule that if I had a chance of getting a royal flush, I kept it. Now, if I was to calculate the value of winning a royal flush and the odds, I mean, you could, you know, there should be some chance, right? Where, yeah, you might take a, take a chance because it's a big payoff because they had these huge progressive, like million dollar, and the numbers kept changing while you were playing, right? <laughs> royal flush jackpot. The point though was that wasn't what I was worried about. It wasn't just that it was so big. It was like, look, it would be life changing. Right. And so I said, look, you know, whatever I win or don't win, I expect to lose playing. I, I'm coming in with $100. I expect to lose it. And then, all right, I've had fun. If I won the jackpot, that would change my life. It would be like going to heaven. Right. And so I said, I am going to just maintain this chance. Right. Totally out of line with any 
payoff that I might get um, from either playing the game normally or you know getting this this uh, this jackpot. I just want to keep all the chances I can of getting the royal flush. That was not continuous. That violated continuity. That was me bringing in a categoric thinking of things. Hey, there's some outcome that's so great. I just want this chance of it. So it can exist. It existed for me in the real world. Not common necessarily. And you have to, you know, explain to me why the player would be violating continuity before he said, okay, we can't use this fund Norman Morgenstern utility function here. Uh, we'd have to come up with something else. And you could probably write a, a function for that, but you couldn't use the standard von Neumann Morgenstern utility function in that case. Finally, there's independence of irrelevant alternatives. Uh, and preferences, this says that preferences over lotteries must remain consistent regardless of the choices. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, suppose someone is indifferent between A, having A with certainty and a 50% chance of getting B, right? Meaning B presumably is twice as good as A, right? All right, keep that, put a pin in that. And then also assume that they are indifferent between B and C, right? So B and C are the same, right? Equal, we would we, we give them, if we were doing the utility function, we give them equal numbers, right? All right, well, do you see where we're going with this, right? If, in the choice between A and B, it looked like B was twice as good as A. And if in the choice between B and C, it looked like B and C were equal, then guess what? In a choice between A and C, a player should be indifferent between the certainty of getting A and a 50% chance of C, because basically C should be twice as good as A, right? And this is sort of like a transitivity, although here we're talking about equivalences and um, but it's a measure of consistency that the value you place on something doesn't change based on what the alternative is, right? And so we're not having, uh, you know, hey, when I choose between, uh, you know, it, by the way, I can write the above sentence in terms of vanilla and strawberry the following way. If, you know, if you're different between vanilla and strawberry, right, that's standing in for A and B, and the certainty of vanilla and a coin toss over chocolate, right? So in other words, you, you know, vanilla is equal to half chocolate because you're gonna, you know, it's equivalent to a coin toss over it. Then the same should hold for a choice between strawberry and chocolate. You should be indifferent between the certainty of getting strawberry and getting chocolate, same thing. And the point is that the way, you know, the the, the utilities you're, you're figuring out, you're assigning for outcomes shouldn't change based on what the choices are, right? The choice between vanilla and strawberry or strawberry and chocolate or vanilla and chocolate, right? We should see consistency across all these things. That is to say the numbers are independent of alternatives, right? They say irrelevant alternatives, but that's what we mean. So in the end, these are all consistency questions. And of course, I've taken 13 minutes to explain them all. This is why we hate getting deep into technical things, but those are those are the conditions that the player has to exhibit in order for us the von Neumann Morgenstern utility theorem to hold. And so we can think of these as other, you know, when using von Neumann Morgenstern utility functions, we're basically saying these are the requirements of rationality.